She-Hulk Attorney at Law just released, much to Marvel fans' excitement. It's a show that circles around the MCU Hulk's cousin, Jennifer Walters, aspiring lawyer. However, previously and currently, it has received backlash for the CGI effects. However, the head of it all addressed these criticisms and controversy in a statement. Keep watching to find out what she said. Let's start with the first episode. Even before its release, She-Hulk was already receiving criticisms from fans for being low quality in terms of graphic design and CGI, and this criticism comes after Marvel was exposed for overworking their VFX artists, in charge of those designs, demanding quantity over quality, not giving them enough time to complete projects or letting them reach their full potential. And it makes sense, with Marvel having released several projects over the past year, including the majority of their TV shows, new movies, one which was a big blockbuster, Spider-Man No Way Home, the artists feel overworked. The Marvel team recently responded to these outcries, head writer Jessica Gao saying, this is a massive undertaking to have a show where the main character is CG. It's terrible that a lot of artists feel rushed and feel that the workload is too massive. I think everybody on this panel stands in solidarity with all workers. And so comes the criticisms of She-Hulk and the graphic design effects done on Tatiana Maslany for the design of She-Hulk. Some going even as far as comparing her to the ogre Fiona from Shrek. However, director Kat Koiro responded to these criticisms, explaining that she doesn't necessarily think people are critiquing She-Hulk for how bad her design is, but because of women's bodies in general. In terms of the CGI being critiqued, I think that it has to do with our culture's belief in its ownership of women's bodies. She had said at the show's Television Critics Association press tour panel, I think a lot of critique comes from feeling like they're able to tear apart the CGI women. There's a lot of talk about her body type and we based it on Olympic athletes and not bodybuilders. But I think if we had gone the other way, we would be facing the same critique. I think it's very hard to win when you make women's bodies. She explained the double standard, and director Jessica Coiro had also addressed the claims of VFX workers being overworked, saying, We stand in solidarity with what they say the truth is. Coiro added, We work with them, but we're not behind the scenes on these long nights and days. If they're feeling pressure, we stand with them, and we listen to them. So what is the first episode about? Aside from criticisms of the show so far, let's talk about what actually happened, including the mid-credits scene that discussed Steve Rogers. Warning, spoilers ahead. The show starts off with Bruce Banner and his cousin Jennifer Walters driving together, eating hot Cheetos and discussing his old teammates. Like Steve Rogers, Jennifer, or Jen, as Bruce calls her, providing her fair share of theories. However, during their drive, all of the sudden, a large ship out of nowhere blocks their path, and Jennifer swerves their car, and it sends them flying off the road. Bruce is injured and bleeding, and Jen has open wounds. She pulls him out of the car, however, due to his contaminated blood with the radiation, when his blood touches her wound, she becomes infected with the same chemicals that make him the Hulk. She hulks out and later ends up at a bar in a cabin, where she tries to call for help for them. After receiving clothes from women who mistake her appearance for a man who treated her wrong, she's met with some dangerous men outside. That's when she hulks out again and is later brought back to Bruce's isolated cabin in a paradise. Bruce decides then and there he will help her out with her new superpowers and the two quickly realize she's not separated from herself when she becomes a Hulk. She's able to communicate normally, unlike the original Avengers or Avengers Age of Ultron where Bruce completely disassociates, with Black Widow in the second movie having to tell him a lullaby as Tony Stark called it. Jen still needs to learn to control when she hulks out, but she's responsive and communicative throughout the process. Bruce comedically tries to help her with various exercises of relaxation and practice. But then the two get into a fight when he tells her she can't be who she once was. Emotional because of her desire to pursue her job as a lawyer. She and Bruce fight verbally, then physically, with the aftermath of Bruce's cabin being destroyed. And now, breaking the fourth wall. The following scene shows Bruce telling Jen if she wants to be a lawyer and try going back to the normal way of living. He respects that. She then turns and looks straight at the camera, saying, he doesn't mean that. Then the two look confused. This isn't the first time Marvel has broken the fourth wall, aka when characters look into the camera as if they're connecting with the viewers. And fans on social media have pointed out that this happened in a few projects such as WandaVision, Black Widow, and Spider-Man No Way Home. Jen does later return to work on a case, however, someone who appears to be a villain, aka Jamila Jamil, bursts into the courtroom of the room she's working in. Her friend encourages her to use her newfound talent to not only protect them, but to get her point across. Jen does hulk out, and almost instantly, the villain falls to the ground. 
Next, the mid credit scene. In the mid credit scene of the episode, Marvel shockingly touched on the topic of Captain America's virginity. Jen is with Bruce again in the secluded island, and she's apparently sobbing. Also appearing to be drunk, saying she can't believe Steve Rogers died a virgin and that it's so sad. Bruce, annoyed with her drunken ramblings, finally tells her that Steve Rogers is not a virgin. He lost his virginity to a girl in 1943 on the USO tour. She then Surprisingly, sheds her facade and was only pretending to be drunk to pull the truth out of him. And Captain America himself, Chris Evans, didn't know that this topic was going to be touched on. I laughed my butt off, Mark Ruffalo had told Entertainment Weekly. I'm like, does someone need to talk to Captain America about this? I haven't. I was afraid he was going to have it cut. Too late now, buddy. The cat's out of the bag. And Chris Evans afterward had tweeted three laughing crying emojis with a zipped mouth emoji with hashtag She-Hulk. Ruffalo praised the show for not only exposing the truth about Steve Rogers' virginity, but also for other elements the show brought to the table. That's all the human stuff that we don't get to usually see, he had said. What's great about this show is that we got to see them as just human beings and what their lives are and what those histories are. It's really different in that way, and it's funny because we're seeing this single girl in her 30s, and when head writer Jessica Gao said, I love how horny forward the show is, I was like, I'm gonna use that. The show has gotten so far mixed reviews, but time will only tell if this series is a success like the others they have released. And now, this actor reveals he's been scolded on many occasions for this. When the Marvel hit series Loki released, fans were overjoyed to see the return of their favorite characters, or a variant of him, who had died in Avengers Infinity War when he had been choked by Thanos. Owen Wilson was featured on the show as Mobius, or or one of the heads of the TVA in the show, or the Time Variance Authority Department, which controls the timeline, or attempted to, before the multiverse broke loose, thus being the plotline for Phase 4. The actor recently revealed that he told the magazine Esquire that Marvel had texted him, Strike One, after he simply said he was growing a mustache for the TV show. We'll see what happens with this one, Wilson had recently spoken of the upcoming season, which is now filming in London. I immediately get kind of self-conscious because they're so kind of uptight. And when Wilson's Secret Headquarters co-director Ariel Schulman asked him in the same joint interview if Marvel has ever scolded him for saying too much about plot details, Wilson replied, yes, yeah, multiple times. This also comes as a shock since Wilson has been in the film industry for many years. However, Marvel has always been known to hold higher levels of secrecy to their movies than others. They were especially diligent with Spider-Man No Way Home, especially since actor Tom Holland Holland has been known to accidentally slip up in interviews. So, as of now, Owen Wilson will remain tight-lipped, like Bruce Banner did for years, with Steve Rogers' secret. So what did you think of this video? Do you think that She-Hulk's design was good? Have you watched the show yet? And what did you think of the mid credit scene? Please let us know in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe.